Thank you for tuning in to your monthly Roblox Dev Forum news. I'm your host, Crusher Fire, and we're going to be discussing all the changes and newly added features to Roblox for the month of January 2024. The first new feature for the month of January was the addition of generalized shape casts, which you can think of as ray casting but with volume. Previously, we were only able to shape cast with blocks and spheres, but now we can shape cast with any part like meshes and unions. If you want to learn more about shape casting, check out my video in the description below. In the article, it reads, Today we're releasing generalized shape casts, and this was posted on January 22nd. These allow you to cast any arbitrary part into the world, blocks, spheres, cylinders, wedges, CSG, mesh parts, etc. We previously released block cast and sphere cast as ways to find collisions using swept shapes. These can be thought of as ray casts with volume. Until today, shape casts were limited to block and sphere shapes, which limited their usefulness. Even if you started with a block or sphere shape part, you couldn't simply plug the part into the shape cast query. You had to manually copy over the C frame size values. And here they give us a demonstration of what you can use shape cast for. So for example, here is a donut being shapecasted to the terrain in a game. Very, very cool. Of course, performance for shape casting is worse than ray casting, and they state performance is acceptable for smaller cast sizes, but large casts against dense worlds can be pretty slow. We plan to optimize this with our ongoing broad phase work. They also state that they'll be adding an optional C-frame parameter to override the part's original C-frame later this year, so keep an eye out for that. The next change for this month was the addition of a new studio template, which replaced the old racing template with a newer and more modern version. In this template, you can take a look at how Roblox developers themselves structure the code in their games, and maybe you can even use some of their code in your own projects. This new template was released on January 23rd, and on the dev forum post, it says, Continuing our efforts to modernize the studio templates, we've released a brand new and modernized racing template. Keep reading for some instructions and more details about the template. We've updated the endorsed Dune buggy with an improved model, PBR materials, and enhanced gameplay features. The cars can be easily tuned by adjusting various attributes on its components. The racing system has been built to be easily extendable and customizable. Multiple races can be created in an experience and have minimum slash maximum players, laps, etc. configured individually. Checkpoint visuals are automatically created when the race starts. New races can be easily created. Simply duplicate the race folder and place the checkpoints in the desired order. And then of course you have some extra parts to create your own kinds of track in the map. The next change for this month was some changes made to the Creator Marketplace, now called the Creator Store. And it states, today we are excited to kick off a new era as the Creator Store. And these changes were also implemented on January 23rd. Previously called the Creator Marketplace, the goal of the Creator Store is to foster an ecosystem where creators can safely exchange high quality assets and solutions, including models, plugins, meshes, images, fonts, audio, and video that accelerate creation on Roblox. Roblox states, we're committed to ensuring that the Creator Store is a safe place to find assets. Over time, we implemented numerous changes that allow us to hold bad actors accountable and protect creators from malicious assets. With both human and automated systems in place, we believe we can quickly adapt to any issues in the ecosystem. Now they give us some statistics here. They say, here's a quick look at the impact these changes have had. Removed 47 million malicious and copied assets since 2022. Reduced spam by more than 90% since implementing monthly submission limits. In 2023, 99.99% of creator store insertions into Studio have been confirmed safe. I wonder where they got that number from. Now there is another important thing to note with this change, and they state last but most definitely not least, we are thrilled to begin the rollout of our USD price-based creator store that was announced at RDC. This will enable you to keep 100% of the proceeds from the sales of your plugins and models sold in Studio or Creator Hub minus sale tax and payment processing fees. Now many developers are upset that the creator store is moving away from Robux purchases towards USD purchases. And I would agree, swapping out the currency used in Roblox's ecosystem for another payment method doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And the top post states, update is good, but 
Please like this post if you disagree with the USD Force update. This shows how much people dislike that portion on the update. Let's try to ratio to show us that we disagree with a portion of this update and it's gotten a whole bunch of hearts and this person lists out their rant. Removing the Robux option is so useless for this. What were you guys trying to achieve to make it only USD based? Why not have both? There isn't much of a reason to force it to be USD. Makes it harder for sanctioned devs who can't spend real life money on Robux, relying on donation slash money made from games. People who can't spend money on Robux. People who can't devx, blah, blah, blah. Makes sense. If you force it to be USD only, you're severely capping the amount of people that can actually purchase a product from the creator store. Another change we saw for this month was the expansion of immersive ads. These changes were made on January 24th. There's not much to talk about here other than some additional controls added to immersive ads. They state that we are opening up immersive ads, publishing eligibility to some developers with experiences that have 9 plus, 13 plus, and 17 plus age recommendations. And they give us some extra controls for when you create ads to the ad manager for immersive ads. Nothing too exciting here, but it's just some extra features if you use the ads manager. Are you experiencing any memory leak issues in your game? Well, this is the new update for you. So this new update was made to the developer console and this was posted on January 25th. And this allows you to visualize how memory is now being utilized in your game, which can make it much easier for you to find and fix memory leak problems. Roblox states, we have released a new developer console tool to help you debug and solve issues with memory usage and memory leaks, both in client and on the server. The main focus of the tool is to provide insights into the memory used by the Lua U virtual machine, but it can also give hints on where unparented engine instances are being held by scripts. This tool is only visible if you are a developer of the experience. To use the new tool, open the developer console using the F9 key or developer console button in the settings and select Lua U heap from the drop down list. To explore the current memory allocation, create snapshots using the create snapshot button on the right. When multiple snapshots are created, you can compare differences in memory use by clicking on a snapshot in the list on the left and clicking compare on a different snapshot in the list. Please note, be careful when making snapshots on the server. We recommend first trying it out in studio and then testing it live in a private instance. Taking a server snapshot in a live experience is possible, but it can take a considerable amount of time that will be seen as high ping by players. During the preview, we received reports of server snapshots crashing the server because of a timeout. We are working to improve the performance of the capture to avoid such a failure case. So this whole article details about all of the different things that will appear within these different memory snapshots. And you can go ahead and take a look at where stuff is being stored in memory in your scripts. This is a very long article. So if you want to read more about this new feature, you can go ahead and check it out in the link in the description below. The next update for this month is another critical change that specifically affects the custom physical properties for base parts. So previously, the smallest density of a part you could set was 0.01, but now they have expanded this to go as low as 0.0001, and this may impact your games. Why? Well, let's say you set the density of a part in a script to zero. Before, it would set the value to 0.01, but now it's going to set it to 0.0001. Why is this important? Well, it says right here, why should you care? If your experience is setting the density of any part to a value lower than 0.01, then this change will cause a change in user experience. For example, if you currently have the density of any part set to zero, then this change will make that part start floating since its density will change from 0.01 to 0.0001, where that value is lighter than the density of the air, which is 0.00129. So that's right, you heard, you can make parts in your game lighter than air, which means you can make balloons. They also make note that the popular A chassis module does set the density for a particular part to zero. And that's a problem because it's going to make it lighter than air. So they state, 
If your experience utilizes any chassis from the toolbox, particularly any A chassis, and hasn't undergone this fix in the associated scripts, you might encounter issues. We encourage you to address this to ensure the continued smooth operation of your experiences. So if you're using an A chassis and there is something setting the density of parts to zero, you might want to change that to 0 0.01. The next change for this month was on January 26, and that was the addition of a recommended feed on the home page. And it's just going to display recommended games for you to play. Pretty cool and not much else to say about it. Another change for this month is changes to something called the Open Cloud Asset API. And the Open Cloud Asset API is an API that allows you to interact with Roblox systems. So they stay exciting news Following on a previous launch, we are launching an update for the API. This update introduces new APIs that enable you to access and modify assets metadata. This includes getting the asset name, description, creator information, moderation status, etc. Updating the asset name, description, etc. Listing all versions of an asset, blah, blah, blah. The purpose of this API is for you to have the ability to manipulate assets in an automated fashion instead of having to do it manually. Now, I don't use this API, so I can't really make any big comments on these changes, but if you're somebody who needs to manipulate or create a bunch of assets and whatnot, doing it in an automated fashion using this API is going to be much faster than doing it manually by hand. So this is a good change for people who need to utilize this kind of feature. But of course, they do have a little warning message here that they have temporarily disabled some of the endpoints mentioned here due to an unforeseen issue. So we'll see when they resolve that and then re-enable these changes that they've made. Another update for the month of January was made on the 29th, where it states, starting today, we will update how followers are counted when assessing if a user who is contributing to a top experience has met criteria to gain the verified badge. So that badge is that little checkmark icon you can see next to usernames. And they've noticed that there are some individuals who are botting their accounts to get followers to get the verified badge. So now they state that they're only going to include genuine followers and exclude any followers our systems have identified as bots. And any person who has botted their account to get a verified badge may have their verified badge removed. Live scripting is now here and out of beta on January 30th. What is live scripting? Well, this awesome feature allows you to work with multiple developers in the same script at the same time. They state that live scripting enables you and your teammates to code together in real time. It is based on team create and it will resolve many of the current friction points in studio. No need to apply changes anymore, no locking hurdles, and no need for script recovery pop-ups. Live scripting automatically saves your script every five minutes and upon closing, you can also save your scripts at any time by pressing Control S. These saved versions will be accessible in the script version history. And at the bottom, of course, they list all of the people that helped to make this new feature possible. So a lot of people worked to get live scripting out of beta and into production. Pretty cool. And for the last change introduced for this month, announced on January 31st, is a pretty boring change, but it states, Hi creators, as you may have noticed, avatar item sales are now integrated into our recurring group payouts. Previously, creators had to manually process group payouts for avatar item sales. This integration, which began in November 2023, ensures consistency between avatar item sales and the group payout processes for other products like developer products and passes. So technically, this new feature did not come out in January. It actually came out in November of 2023, but they didn't announce it until January 31st. I don't know why, but that's just whatever. Cool, boring, mundane, don't really care about it. But if this is anything of a concern to you, well, here's another cool feature for recurring payouts in groups. So that's all the changes introduced for the month of January. Tune in next month to learn about all the changes announced on the dev forum for the month of February. Thanks for watching.